Sometimes you stumble upon an image or a video of an animal and it just makes you think, what am I even looking at? And honestly, that's understandable, especially if we are looking at sea creatures. Even some of the famous sea creatures are pretty weird when you think about it, like the sea angels for example, or the filiro, and also some creatures that I've covered before, like the headless chicken monster and big butt worm. For this video, I would like to talk about yet another interesting looking sea creature, which name should be written in the title as always, unless I forgot to change the title like that one time. Anyway, let me bring up the question. What exactly is Bathydevius? So, a lot of you might have heard or seen a picture of this creature before because the publication is actually relatively recent. It was scientifically published back in December 2024. However, the discovery of the creature itself is not recent at all. We've encountered them multiple times since the early 2000s. In fact, we've encountered 157 individuals of them, at least by the time the article was published. So, why was it just published at the end of 2024, you might ask? Well, that's because we didn't have enough idea of what that creature actually is. It was just a mystery mollusk to us. Emphasize on was because now we do know what they are. How? Well, we caught some individuals and we did various analysis on them, including molecular phylogenetic analysis. Alright, so what exactly are they? Well, they are nudibranch. Yes, you could say they are technically sea slugs. If that confuses you, then let me just tell you. There are various weird looking nudibranch like the Spanish dancer nudibranch and glaucus. But yeah, Bathydephius is indeed extra weird. They are classified in their own family, with only one genus and one species, Bathydephius caudactylus. Bathydephius means deep living deviation, because they deviate from other nudibranch and they live in the deep sea, while caudactylus means finger tail, because the posterior margin of their tail has finger-like projections. The majority of them was encountered around the Monterey Submarine Canyon, but some individuals were found off the coast of Point Conception and towards Oregon. Apparently, two similar looking nudibranch were encountered around the Mariana Trench. If those are indeed Bathydevius, that would mean their distribution is pretty wide. However, as far as I know, we aren't sure whether those two are Bathydevius. So yeah, still need further investigation. While I'm talking about their taxonomy, I feel like this is a good time to talk about the result of their phylogenetic analysis. However, I decided to postpone that topic because it'll make more sense later after I talk about their morphology and behavior. Hence, I decided to talk about their morphoanatomy first. But before that... Bathydevius are relatively small, ranging from 5 to 14.5 cm long. They are mostly transparent, with gelatinous body consistency. They are generally divided into three regions, the head, the trunk, and the tail. The majority of their head is their hood. In fact, you could argue the majority of their size is their hood. This hood is flexible, especially towards the tip. They can enclose the hood like this, or they could even close it rapidly to propel themselves backward. Moving on from the head, let's check their trunk. So, they themselves don't have an obvious neck, which is why I was thinking, where exactly does the head end? Because their rhinophores are stated to be located on their trunk. By the way, these are their rhinophores, and if you haven't heard of rhinophores before, it's these antennae-like structure on nudibranch. These are chemosensory organs, by the way, which is why calling these things antennae is quite fitting. For the typically shaped nudibranch, Rhinophores are generally considered to be located on their head, not on their trunk, which is why I'm quite confused about what separates the head of Bathydevius with their trunk. What is the extent of their head? But I'll talk about that thought later. Let's look at their external morphology first. Behind these rhinophores, this flap-like thing, this is their gill structure, or their gill arm. Now, if you have been looking at the images I've shown throughout this video, you might be wondering, what is the structure? This is their foot. Foot with T, by the way, not with D. This is homologous to the foot of nudibranch that they use to creep on the substrate. Bathydephius are mostly pelagic, 
meaning they mostly swim, not creeping on the substrate, which is why the food just kinda hangs from their body like this. Their food is not useless though, we'll talk about that later. Now, moving on to their tail. They have around this flattened tail. Along the end of their tail, there are 9 to 16 finger-like projections. These are simply called dactyls, which means finger by the way. That's also why their specific epithet is called dactylus. Okay, now let's look at their anatomy, which is quite easy to do actually, because they are mostly transparent. This whitish part right here is their mouth. Naturally, it leads to their stomach. This rugose organ is their digestive gland. This thin tube is their intestine, and it leads to their anal opening, which is located just behind their gill arm. Oh, by the way, this solid white structure is their brain, which made me think, oh, maybe this is what separates their head and trunk. But then, it also made me think, wouldn't that mean the rhinophores should also be considered to be located on their head and not on their trunk? But hey, it is what it is. I don't really want to nitpick that detail. Let's just move on. Their digestive system is on the left side of their body. The right side is filled with their reproductive organs. This white thing is. You can see their reproductive duct leading outside towards the right side of their body. Apparently, penis-like organ exists towards the end of their genital duct, but it's not easy to see. Oh and, apparently a transparent heart also exists beneath the gill, which is also not easy to see. And yeah. That's their morphoanatomy. Next, let's talk about their lifestyle. Bathydavius are bathypelagic nudibranchs. In fact, it is the only known bathypelagic nudibranchs, to this point at least. Even being pelagic itself is special for nudibranchs, because nudibranchs mostly creep on the substrate. There are several known pelagic nudibranchs, like the Filero, Glaucus, or Fiona, but Glaucus and Fiona cannot swim as freely as Bathydavius. Filiro can swim quite well, to the point that they are considered to be fish-like, but Filiro does not exist in deep water, at least not to the extent of Bathydavius. Bathydavius individuals were encountered in the bathypelagic zone from 1013 to 4009 meters depth. That is extreme for pelagic nudibranch, or you could argue even nudibranch in general. It is noted that when not performing a swimming movement, they neither sink nor rise. They can just chill and slowly move along the water column. Of course, they can undulate their body to actively move forward. By doing so, their tail functions as paddle. Not only that though, like I said earlier, they could also perform rapid closure of their hood to propel themselves backward rapidly if they need to. However, the main function of the hood is, if it's not obvious enough, to trap food. Unlike most pelagic nudibranchs which mostly feed on nidarians, Bathydavius mostly feed on crustaceans. As with many other deep sea animals though, the detail of their lifestyle is not well documented. However, we do know a little bit about their reproduction. When spawning eggs, they stick to the bottom with their food. And yeah, that's why earlier I said their food is not useless. The slender white ribbons of eggs will hatch into trochophore larvae with long cilia. Another interesting trivia is, as with many other deep sea creatures, they exhibit bioluminescence. The bioluminescence comes from granules spread across their body, which gives them a starry appearance. While being tested in the lab, they exhibit bioluminescence upon being physically disturbed, so the bioluminescence might function as protection. The fact that their dactyls could come off and the fact that their dactyls are also bioluminescent might indicate it functions similarly to caudal autotomy where a predator will be misdirected to chase the tail while the main body escape. That's just a hypothesis though, we don't know for sure about that. Lastly, before I end the video, I would like to talk about the result of their phylogenetic analysis. So, there are actually not that many known bioluminescent nudibranch. The closest thing that we could think of is Filero, which is also a pelagic nudibranch by the way. So there was an assumption that Bathydavius could be somewhat related to Filero. Or it could be related to Melibe, which is also a nudibranch. Not pelagic, but they also have an oral hood to trap food. And now, which one is the real close relative? Well, the answer is none of them actually. 
Analysis using some mitochondrial DNA like CO1 and 19S RNA placed them close to the Bathydories. But analysis using 18S RNA placed them as the sister group of other nudibranch. Whichever the correct answer is, they are definitely not closely related to Filiro nor Melibe. And yeah, that's Bathydephius, truly a deviant. We've known the existence of this creature for years, yet we didn't know what they are. Still, we do ended up knowing what they are. With enough data, chance, and opportunity, that could also be the case for many other animals. Who knows what we'll discover in the future. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, if you want to see videos of them moving, there are clips available in Ambari's channel on YouTube. I'll leave the link in the description if you are curious. Anyway, enjoy your day.